if you're craving salt, if you have symptoms of weakness or cramping in your legs, constipation if you struggle with that, or even diarrhea side of things, if you're having issues with your bones or with your teeth, or having just a fatigue going on, or tremors happening in your muscles, these are all major, major warning signs of one key category of nutrients, electrolytes. We're gonna talk about them today. I'm gonna actually show you which of the many, there's multiple electrolytes, sodiums, potassiums, magnesiums, calciums, that you might be low in based on your symptoms. So hold tight for that as we take a look at the amazing capabilities of what electrolytes do in our system. Now electrolytes goes all the way back, kind of geeking out here on Greek language. Uh, electrolytes come from the word electro, which of course refers to electricity. Light comes from the Greek word to loosen or untie. So in other words, electrolytes are loosened, when they're loosened, they are able to conduct electricity in your body. You're an electrical being. When you die, there's no more electricity in there. So your nervous system controls everything in your body and it requires these little salts, electrolytes, in order to do it. Minerals like sodium, calcium, magnesium, potassium, all examples of electrolytes. I'm gonna show you in a moment which one you're potentially lacking in or getting too much of based on your symptoms and then what foods to put in to get it leveled back out all right now when they're dissolved in our body's large supply of water you're at least 70 percent water electrolytes gain electric charge positive or negative and they become capable of transmitting the nerve signals the electricity from certain cells in the bodies to others so it transmits these messages so they're absolutely crucial to the nervous system, the most important system in the body for overall wellness, for efficiency. They're also involved in maintaining the balance of the fluid inside the system. So as a whole, your body has to have this blood plasma nutrient transfer that happens every single day. The amount of fluid entering the body needs to equal the amount of fluid leaving the body. Otherwise you get swollen, right? You're holding on to a lot of this, edema, that's another warning sign of maybe an imbalance. And when those two sides of the equation are not generally equal, imbalances occur, okay? Electrolytes keep that playing field level. Other things that they do, they regulate pH in your body, which is crazy important for cancer prevention, crazy important for inflammation. They promote tissue growth, repair, they facilitate muscle contractions, your heart being the most important muscle you have. So if you have a heart issue, electrolytes are crazy important. Assisting in uh, healthy blood clotting, uh, they, uh, specific electrolytes on their own have respective functions that they individually do, like calcium, for example, helps to build strong bones and teeth. So these individual minerals also play their own specific roles. Now. So what causes them to get out of balance? Number one, just rehydration. You do a lot of physical activity, you don't rehydrate properly. You lose fluids, uh, sweat, vomit, diarrhea, urine, uh, any of those can create this imbalance where you're too much fluid off and your skin kind of tastes a little salty when you sweat. You're losing the minerals and the electrolytes at the same time as losing the fluid. Poor nutrition does it, drinking too much uh, does it, not drinking enough water, drinking too much alcohol, both do it. Severe dehydration, drugs, medications, um, a pH imbalance in your body, heart, kidney, and respiratory problems, if you have a history of those, those create them, as well as cancer treatment. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Which one are you having symptoms with, okay? I'm gonna break down four. Sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium. These are the big four minerals inside of your body. How do you know if you're high or low? Do you have these symptoms? If you are high in sodium, you will crave water. You will crave water. You might also experience weakness. Crave water, experience weakness, sodium's high. If sodium is low, you're gonna crave salt. Salt lovers. If you're tired, also if you're cramping, especially in the legs, sodium's too low, it's gotta get up. Potassium, when potassium is too low, you get leg cramps and potentially uh, constipation. Everything's backing up into the system. Now, if you have way too much potassium, you might feel some weakness and you're gonna probably have diarrhea. Calcium, if it's low, weak bones, bad teeth, severe cramping is now a calcium focus. If calcium is way too high, you feel lethargic and you might even have pain inside your bones. Too much calcium in the blood. 
Now, magnesium. If magnesium is low, it can create tremors, issues with the muscles, a fast heartbeat, and you can even get disoriented, disoriented and confused. If magnesium is high, your blood pressure goes down and you can get dizzy. So what do we do about these things? If you are high in sodium, we want to start lowering the amount of high sodium foods. That's the biggest way to help lower that down, especially processed foods. If you're high in potassium, we want to look at adding in a little bit of sodium to balance it out and then back off overeating potassium. Calcium the same way, if it's too high in your blood, you'll want to take vitamin D and that's going to help move it out of the blood and get it into your blood vessels. Vitamin K2 will help get it into the bone. So vitamin D and K2, a supplement with that will help level out the calcium. That's its job. And if magnesium is high, we want to back off eating foods that contain magnesium and lower it. Now what I wanted to focus on is some general electrolyte tips and then give you specifically food, specific foods to eat if you're low in sodium, potassium, calcium, or magnesium. In general, avoid taking diuretics. They're going to really throw off your urine and your fluid output. Drink less alcohol. Functions as a diuretics, you're gonna lose a lot of the minerals there. Carry around a water bottle with you regularly. Mine's got some greens in it right now. So you can just sip, sip, sip. I have a little measure on the side of these water bottles that I make um, at 8 a.m. all the way to 12, and I gotta refill it. Then I go and work my way down from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. At least two of these a day, half your body weight in ounces of water is what you're looking for, all right? Check your urine. Your urine will tell you if you are having a mineral problem and a hydration problem. If it's yellow, you gotta drink until you get that white, and then eat foods that have higher water content. Celery, melons, cucumber, some of my favorite, broth-based soups, very good idea as well. So let's take a peek at the foods you can eat based on the potential electrolyte that is needed. Sodium, right? You're craving water, you need more sodium in your diet. Dill pickles are fantastic. Tomato juice is fantastic. Tomato sauces and even soups that are based in bone broth. Add sea salt to those foods. Sea salt is not the enemy, processed salt is the enemy. And if you're craving water, then we need to get the sodium up. Next is potassium. My favorite sources are spinach, broccoli, and leafy greens. We are massively deficient on potassium. Chances are you are deficient in it, especially if you're constipated. I would add that in. Magnesium, if we are deficient in this, black beans, incredible source of magnesium, as well as pumpkin seeds, which have good healthy fats in them, and spinach, again, good source of magnesium. You could, in this instant, um, saute it on the, on the stove and have spinach that way and add a little sea salt to it. Good way to release the magnesium from those nutrients. And then finally, calcium. If you're low on calcium, nuts, seeds, ricotta cheese, collard greens, kale, sardines, excellent sources of getting calcium inside of the body. So you could rewind that and play those over for which one did I have issues with again? If you want to give a recap of high sodium, low sodium, potassium low, potassium high, calcium low, calcium high, magnesium low, magnesium high, and then the foods that come along with it as well to help break it down. To get you started on getting a well-rounded nutritional plan, check the quick start guide out below. I'll keep bringing you resources. Hit the subscribe button so you can learn how to make health simple right here on the Dr. Living channel.